Hey guys, the video that you're just about to watch was taken from my online medicine interview course, which consists of a number of videos to help you guys do well in your medicine interviews. If you guys would like some more videos on how to do well on the interviews, there are a ton of free videos over on my online course. The link for that will be in the description down below, so feel free to go check them out. I've been giving interview courses over the last two years, so I really do hope you guys enjoy the course and find it beneficial. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with this video. Hi, Mr. Smith. Hi. Hi. My name's uh, Kenji. I am one of the uh, junior doctors here. All right. Um, could I just start by confirming your name and age, please? Yeah, my name is uh, Sam Smith. Um, born in um, the 12th of June, 1958. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Um, so I've been asked by one of the consultants to come and have a chat with you about what's been going on recently in terms of your, um, uh, your treatments. Can I just start by asking um, and confirming how much you know so far about what's been going on? Oh, um, so the other day my GP um, said, you know, the age that mm. I'm at, you know, I'm eligible for a um, prostate cancer screening because he said mm. this is the age where yeah. majority of males get it. Mm -hmm. So obviously he sent me to your to to the, the services here mm. and. Yeah, so mm. I'm just awaiting the test results okay. to see what's going on. So is it just to see um, what the cause has been of your of um, how you've been feeling? Is that, is that right? Or is it just purely from screening? Uh, yeah, right now it's just purely screening. Purely screening. Uh, yeah, I haven't okay. seen any particular problems. Mm -hmm. I was just called in for a normal health review and yeah. they yeah. told me that they'd be sending me for this. Mm -hmm. This okay. is purely protocol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah so, uh, exactly like you said. So it's normally something that happens during this age, during the age you're at, and um, and um, yeah. So one of the you know the, one of the consultants actually did receive your test results, um, and I had a quick discussion with him, and he you know, he will be coming later to to discuss it's more about um, the test results with you and go into a bit more detail as 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 I can because I'm I'm a June doctor, so he's obviously a specialist in this area. Um, but there is a bit of information I, I have been given and I've been, um, I wanted to come tell you myself and to, uh, so you don't have to wait any longer. You know, I can, I can imagine that waiting for your test results for something, you know, like prostate screening is, is quite a, a daunting, you know, situation. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think it's, it's, it's very difficult for me to say, um, but the, the news isn't, isn't, isn't great, unfortunately. Um, Right. And um, yeah, unfortunately, the test results have come back to say that um, it seems that you you have prostate cancer, um, and I'm very sorry to, to say that. Um, I know it's it's quite a quite a scary thing, quite quite a big thing to to say. Um, but I want to say that with, with the reassurance that we we as a team will be here to look after you. You know, we will um, we will work with you and the consultants to deliver a good management plan which hopefully will um you know will be um helpful to you and um and yeah how do you how do you feel about that so far i think i just need a minute to yeah just please take take your time i know it's a nice thing of course, yeah. You know, I... I know I um, have lived a, a long life mm -hmm. now. Um, but, you know, I, I still have my kids and grandkids that, you know, I want to see. Yeah, of course. You know, grow up and you know, they're still in the early stages of mm -hmm. building families. Of course. Yeah. So what what does this what does this mean? Mm -hmm. Like Yeah. What where are we going? Um to be honest it's a bit difficult for me to 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 say. I know um as I mentioned I'm a June doctor, so I'm not a particular specialist in this field. 
Um, but what I can definitely say is that I will chase this up with a consultant and make sure as soon as he can that he will be here to answer any detailed questions you have um, about the diagnosis. Um, but you know, I'm, I'm not entirely sure on the statistics. But what I can say from having you know dealt with a few um, situations like this is uh, prostate cancer does tend to have quite a good outcome. Um, and it does vary case to case. And as I said, I'm not a specialist in this area, but um, I want to just reassure you that, you know, the consultants and the team we have here are very, very good in our center. And, um, and we will try our absolute best to, to be with you throughout, be with you uh, throughout the stages of, uh, of your treatment. And, um, and, you know, you mentioned your family. We'll definitely get your family involved. You know, we'll um, try to find a solution um, or we'll try to find a, a treatment uh, pathway that's that's uh, the that works best for you and your family. Um, and, and yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I understand it's like a lot to, to kind of uh, to live on you. Um, but if you if at any stage you want to come and find me or find anyone on the, on the team to discuss um, any concerns you have, like please feel free. We are, we, we are here to help you. Um, and in the meantime, if there's any kind of family I can call or anything else I can do for you, then I'll, I'll, I'll be more than happy to help. I think I need to find a way to break this to my wife. Mm. <sighs> yeah. is, is, there, is, is, there, is there a possibility that I can help you to, to, to talk to your wife at all? Maybe give some, some medical guidance or you know, advice at all? Or? That would be nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. We can we can certainly arrange that. Yeah, I'm more than happy to to you know when she next come in comes in to just come find me and we can we can uh, go ahead and talk that together. Thank you. Yeah, no I worries. Appreciate that. Yeah. Is there anything else I can kind of help you with, or any other, any other concerns I might be able to address? Well, if, um, I guess we'll just wait to see what the way forward is with the consultant. Mm -hmm. But thank you. Yeah, for yeah. taking the time to do this, I yeah. really appreciate it. No, you're very welcome, and um, yeah, and I know it's, it's it's probably a difficult time for you. And as I said, if um, I'm just over in the office, so if you ever do need to to have a chat at any stage, you know, whether it's in five minutes, ten minutes, two hours, please do come find me. Yeah, yeah, will do. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Okay, so now let's have a look at the Breaking Bad News Station, which in my opinion is one of the hardest stations that you could possibly be uh, given. I personally wasn't given these in my stations, but I do know that some of my friends also had these stations in their interviews. So it really is important to pay attention to the station and try um, deal with it as best as you possibly could. As I said, don't be scared You know, when you first watch the station. It is quite hard and it's something that I still struggle with as a medical student. So don't take it to heart. Let's break it down step by step as to how you can break bad news in an interview. So let's get started. Hi, Mr. Smith. Hi. Hi. My name's uh, Kenji. I am one of the uh, junior doctors here. All right. Um, could I just start by confirming your name and age, please? Okay, so again, I start off by introducing myself, saying who I am and my role, and then going on to confirm the patient's details. Yeah, my name is uh, Sam Smith, um, born in um, the 12th of June, 1958. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Um, so I've been asked by one of the consultants to come and have a chat with you about what's been going on recently in terms of your, um, uh, your treatment. Can I just start by asking um, and confirming how much you know so far about what's been going on? Okay, so a really important thing that I did is before even jumping in telling him what I know, I want to I want to ascertain how much the patient actually knows, and that will really guide you know my the next thing that I talk about. If he says, you know what, I know everything about this, don't worry about you know just explaining things to me, then I can move on. But if he says, actually, you know, um, I don't really know too much about it, then I may have to explain a bit more about what I understand from this as well. So you know, so it's again trying to level the playing field to understand how much the patient knows and try and match that with what I know to then give me a good uh, foundation to approach uh, the topic of giving bad news. Oh, um, so the other day my GP um, said, you know, the age that mm -hmm. I'm at, you know, I'm eligible for a um, prostate cancer screening because he said mm -hmm. this is the age where yeah. the majority of males get it. Mm -hmm. So obviously he sent me to your, to, to the, the services here mm -hmm. and 
Yeah, so mm. I'm just awaiting the test results okay. to see what's going on. So is it just to see um, what the cause has been of your of um, how you've been feeling? Is that, is that right? Or is it just purely from screening? Uh, yeah, right now it's just purely screening. Purely screening. Uh, yeah, I haven't okay. seen any particular problems. Mm -hmm. I was just called in for a normal health review and yeah. they told me that they'd be sending me for this. Mm -hmm. This okay. is purely protocol. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so, yeah so, uh, exactly like you said. So it's normally something that happens during this age, during the age you're at. And um, and um, yeah, so one of the you know the, one of the consultants actually did receive your test results. Um, and I had a quick discussion with him, and he yeah, he will be coming later to to discuss uh, some more about um, the test results with you and go into a bit more detail as 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 I can because I'm I'm a June doctor, so he's obviously a specialist in this area. Um, but there is a bit of information I, I have been given. Okay, so once I've confirmed that you know he knows enough, you know about this uh, scenario and situation, then I'm gonna go and go ahead and deliver the news in a way that's understanding, in a way that's sympathetic. So let's go ahead and do that. And I've been, um, I wanted to come tell you myself, and to uh, so you don't have to wait any longer. You know, I can, I can imagine that waiting for your test results for something you know like prostate screening is is quite a, a daunting you know situation. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I think it's, it's it's very difficult for me to say, um, but the the news isn't 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 great, unfortunately. Um, right. And um, yeah, unfortunately, the test results have come back to say that um, it seems that you you have prostate cancer. Um, and I'm very sorry just to say that. So before I even started, you know, telling him that he has prostate cancer, you know, I, I kind of hinted it, you know, and I hinted that it's not going to be good news. You know, I said. This is not going to be, you know, a, a, a easy conversation to have, uh, and unfortunately, the news, um, you know, isn't isn't positive. So these small kind of words I was saying was was hinting towards the fact that, you know, you are. It's not going to be good news, essentially. And I really do suggest you kind of use flags, you know, you use these kind of small phrases to flag up what's about to come. And that prepares the patient. It prepares the person for what is about to come rather than just jumping in straight away and saying, actually, you know what, you have cancer. You know, that's a very huge diagnosis to give. So try and broach that topic very, very slowly, very gently. And then we can move on from there. Um, I know it's, it's quite, a, quite a scary thing, quite, quite a big thing to, to say. Um, but I want to say that with, with reassurance that we we as a team will be here to look after you. You know we will um, we will work with you and the consultants to deliver a good management plan, which hopefully will um, you know will be um, helpful to you. And um, and yeah, how do you how do you feel about that so far? <sighs> And here I started giving him some reassurance. You know, I said, um, you know, we, we're all here to look after you. All the consultants are going to do our best, put together a management plan. And then I didn't want to give him too much information. I didn't want to overload with information. So I gave that bit of information. And then I said, okay, you know, how do you feel about this so far? And then let the patient um, guide the, the next thing that we talk about. You know, rather than giving him all the information, break it down to small bits and then ask them what they think. Then they'll give you more hints as to what you next need to do. I just need a minute. Yeah, please take take your time. I know it's a nice little thing. Of course, yeah. <sighs> you know, I I know I um have lived a, a long life mm. now. Um but you know I I still have my kids and grandkids that you know I want to see yeah of course you know grow up and you know they're still in the early stages of mm -hmm. building families of course yeah. so what what does this what does this mean mm -hmm. like yeah what where are we going um, um to be honest it's a bit difficult for me to 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 say I know um as I mentioned, I'm a June doctor, so I'm not a particular specialist in this field. Um, but what I can definitely say is that I will chase this up with a consultant and make sure as soon as he can, that he will be here to answer any detailed questions you have um, about the diagnosis. Um, 
but you know, I'm, I'm not entirely sure on the statistics, but what I can say from having you know, dealt with a few um, situations like this is uh, prostate cancer does tend to have quite a good outcome. Um, and it does vary case to case. And as I said, I'm not a specialist in this area, but um, I wanted to reassure you that, you know, the consultants and the team we have here are very, very good in our center. And um, and we will try our absolute best to to be with you throughout be with you uh, throughout the stages of, uh, of your treatment. And, um, and you know, you mentioned your family. We'll definitely get your family involved. You know, we'll um, try find a solution. Um, we'll try find a, a treatment uh, pathway that's that's uh, that works best for you and your family. Um, and, and yeah. Okay, so Sean asked me quite a difficult question to answer, and it's a question I get a lot of the times in my medical school um, exams. So you asked me, you know, what's going to happen with my daughters and what's going to happen with my children? And if you feel like you're out of your depth and, you, and there's a question that you can't necessarily answer, don't give the patient false reassurance, don't guess the answer, tell them the truth and say, look, I'm not a specialist in this area, but I will make sure that we get this answered with the consultants, and then again provide reassurance. And that's exactly what I did. I understand it's like a lot to, to kind of uh, to live on you, um, but if you if at any stage you want to come and find me or find anyone on the, on the team to discuss um, any concerns you have, like please feel free. We are, we, we are here to help you. Um, and in the meantime, if there's any kind of family I can call or anything else I can do for you, then I'll, I'll, I'll be more than happy to help. And again, what I did after this is provide even more reassurance by saying, look, if you, whenever you want to talk, if there's anything you want to talk about, please come back and talk to me or anyone on the team. And also, if there's anyone in your family that can possibly call to, and talk to as well, then do let me know as well. So that's just, you know, showing empathy, showing that you understand what they're going through and you're really, really trying to help them get through what they're going through. I think I need to find a way to break this to my wife. Mm. <sighs> Yeah. Is, is, there, is, is, there, is there a possibility that I can help you to, to, to talk to your wife at all? Maybe give some, some medical guidance or you know, advice at all? Or... That would be nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah we, can, we can certainly arrange that. Yeah. I'm more than happy to, to you know, when she next come in, comes in, to just come find me and we can, we can uh, go ahead and talk to her together. Thank you. Yeah, no I worries. I appreciate that. Yeah. <sighs> Is there anything else I can kind of help you with or any other, any other concerns I might be able to address? Well, um, I guess we'll just wait to see what the way forward is with the consultant. Mm -hmm. But thank you yeah, for yeah. taking the time to do this. And again, before wrapping things up, I just, you know, let him know that if there's anything else he wants to talk about, do let me know. And also ask him if there's anything else that we can do to, uh, to help him. I really yeah. appreciate it. You're very welcome. And, um, yeah, I know it's, it's, it's probably a difficult time for you and as I said, if, um, I'm just over in the office so if you do need to, to have a chat at any stage, you know, whether it's in five minutes, ten minutes, two hours, please do come back. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. And again, I wrap things up by giving him a last dose of reassurance to let him know that I'm here for them and make sure that the interviewer sticks that in their mind and they can say straight away that he was very reassuring, very understanding and very empathetic. So do try to get that point across as much as you can. This wasn't actually that bad of a scenario, but if you do have a patient, let's say, who cries and starts to be um, a bit more dramatic, you know, do offer them a tissue and try to make them feel as good as they possibly can. In an interview, I would personally probably avoid, you know, touching the patient, like holding their hand or, you know, holding their back or anything like that just because you don't know how much you know the patient you know and how well you know the patient of course if it was a patient in real life that you knew very well you knew their family you're a gp and they've been seeing you so often then that's something you can possibly do but in an interview you can't confirm that you know you're not entirely sure what you should do so i'd avoid any you know physical contact at all try approach it the way i did in a very empathetic way you know try and slowly you know broach the topic of prostate cancer and eventually deliver the diagnosis uh, wrapped up in 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 empathy and understanding and in care and most importantly reassurance and if you do all of these things i'm sure you guys will do really well in your station